Uh, welcome all, welcome back. And C squared. In this lesson, we'll talk about factoring, uh, factoring using the GCF, uh, greatest common factor. In other words, uh, also we're gonna talk about um, factoring by grouping. And uh, finally, we're gonna talk about how to solve equation uh, using factoring by GCF. But first of all, we're gonna talk about how to factor a monomial. And I said here it's similar to factoring a whole number. So what do I mean by that? Uh, 72, if you uh, remember, it's 9 times 8, one way to write it. I think that's the one pop up in my mind. And then we have 72xy, so we're going to have times x times y. So my next thing will be to factor out 9, and that will be 3 times 3, or 3 squared. Now what about 8? That is 2 times 2 times 2. So that is 2 cubed, 2 to the third power times x times y. So let me start from the lowest factor, which is 2 to the third power times 3 to the second power times x times y. This will be the uh, factor form of this monomial. Very similar, this one, right? We're going to do 4 times 5. Now x cubed, that will be x times x times x, and y squared is y times y. Now 4 is nothing else than 2 to the second power times 5. And you know what? In fact, I'm going to keep it like that, like x cubed times y squared, right? Um, and that will be a factorization of this monomial. And very similar with... Uh, Finding the GCF for two numbers, we're going to find the GCF, the greatest common factor, for two or more monomials. So let's take a look to this example. We need to find the GCF, the greatest common factor, for 12x squared y cubed and 18x cubed y. So what will be the prime factorization for each monomial? This one is going to be, what, 3 times 4 times x times x times y times y times y. And that will be uh, 2 square, right? That 4, this 4 here, it's 2 square, times 3 times... Again, I'm going to go back to x square and y cube. Um, or in, yeah, y cube. Let's do that way. Now, let's take a look to 18. And uh, we are going to have here 2 times 9 times x cube and times y. So this is the factorization. We can go to the prime factorization now. And... Uh, you see what we have. So now let's take a look to greatest common factor. The GCF of these two expressions will be, we collect the common factors. So 2, 2, 3, 3. And then we look to variable when we have x and x and y and y. Now one more thing you want to take a look at is the exponents in here. So if you take a look, we have these 2 and 2, the common factor. The, the, we have an exponent of 1 and exponent of 2. The smallest one is 2, so we're going to keep it exactly as it is. The same for 3. However, when we move to the variable, we have x and x here, but we notice this is the, the smallest exponent, 2 and 3, right? 2 is the smallest, so we're going to get that x squared. And very similar, we're looking here to the y's, and we keep that y. So the GCF is the expression you see here, which is 6 x squared y. Uh, as a general note, from my experience, um, students will be 
okay to find the last part of variable x squared and y in this case and maybe that uh, GCF of 12 and 18 will be sometime a problem which in this case is 6 okay now let's take a look to uh, the next uh, part and in this part we are gonna factor out using the GCF so the first thing you're gonna do here is to find the GCF of 27 x squared and 18 x and that is 9x. If you do not see this GCF, you have to do what I did, factor out, and this is going to be 3 times 9 times x squared and 18x. That would be 2 times 9. So you see, I'm kind, I'm kind of mixing the things here. And now I'm, I'm looking the GCF will be that 9, we see it, the common factor in this factor form, but which are not the prime factorization by the way, and x. So sometimes you can do that, like exactly like this. So I'm going to open a parenthesis here, and I need to fill in this parenthesis with an expression that times 9x is what we have here, 27x squared plus 18x, and you have two choices multiplication or division. What do I mean by that? You can go and say, hey, 9x times what is 27x squared? And you can break that in two steps, in fact. 9 times what is 27, and that will be 3. And next times what is x squared, that will be x. Another way is to go, like I said, division. We do 27x squared divided by 9x, and it's the same thing, uh, 3x, right? Okay, let's go to the last part. Don't forget to put a plus, which is the plus we see here. And then the same thing, 9x times what is 18x. And if you see that too, that's great. If not, do 18x divide by 9x, and you'll see that is 2. And this is the factorization for this uh, binomial. Let's take a look to this one. We have a trinomial, but kind of the same idea. You want to take a look to all three factors, and you notice they have a common factor. The greatest common factor is 3, and then we have x squared minus 1x, or just x minus 1. Yeah. So we don't really need the second one. You can erase it. We can have that invisible one. Whenever you finish, don't forget to do the distributive property and see if you get your original problem. Uh, I said here, if your polynomial, polynomial has four or more terms, you can factor by grouping. Okay, so let's see what that means. You see, we have here four terms and we're gonna factor by grouping. And usual, I group the first two and the last two, and most of the time that works fine. So now let's take a look to the first two terms, the 2x cubed and 4x squared. What is the GCF, the greatest common factor for these two terms? That would be 2x squared. If you do not see that GCF, again, you do what I did at the beginning of the problem, of the lesson. And then I'm going to open a parenthesis, and I'm going to have here what? 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. Again, the plus, and 2x squared times 2, it's 4x squared. So we finish with the first group. Now we're going to move to the second group, this 2x plus 4. And what do they have in common? What is the GCF, the greatest common factor of uh, these two terms is the number 2 only, and then here we have x plus 2. Now, a piece of advice in this moment, if you do not see the same quantity inside of the parentheses, go back and check it. Probably you miss something. Most of the time, I'll say 99% of the time, you're going to have the same expression there. Now, we notice we have that common factor that is a factor because we have the multiplication here so now the gcf of these two terms is x plus 2 and then we have 
to x squared plus 2, which is a good factorization. However, if we take a look on this last part, we can factor out a 2. And we have 2, I'm sorry, times 2 times x squared plus 1. And just to be sure, the form that I think is better is this one, 2 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. Okay. Part B, very similar. We're going to use factoring by grouping. And you know by now I said I'm going to group these first two and the last two. And what do we have for the first two? We have three. We have just x squared. I apologize. Not three. We have just x squared for the first two and then x minus one. And now let's take a look to the last part. This is usually sometimes uh, the problem. I will factor out a negative one here. So minus one, in other words, times x. And by the way, I missed something minus three here, right? I missed this one is minus three here. I apologize. So if you do not have the same thing, I just said that you may want to go back and check your factoring, right? But let's, let's check it just to be sure. x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3. That works fine. No, so you can spend 30 seconds, a minute, and do the multiplication and see if you get that. Now, if you notice, we have the same factor now. We have this x minus 3. Like I said, most of the time, you're going to have the same factor. x minus 3, and then we have here x squared minus 1. Okay, and this is a good factorization. Now, if you learn a little bit more about factorization, maybe you recognize this uh, binomial is what we call a difference of square. And we have x minus 3 here and then x minus 1, x plus 1. So this is the prime factorization for this uh, polynomial. Now we're going to move towards uh, something that uh, is very useful. We do factoring for solving quadratic equation. But for that, let's see something that is called zero product property. It's right here. It looks very interesting, right? But let's see what it says. If you have a product and the product is equals to zero, then one of the factors, because a product means factor, should be zero. And you have this statement here where you have two factors, but guess what? It works for three factors. It works for four factors and whatever number of factors you have. So remember, if your product is equals to zero, that means each of the factors in that product can be equals to zero. So now let's see how we use that to solve an equation like this one. So first of all, you want to factor out this binomial. And we're going to factor out by using the GCF, the greatest common factor. So what do we have in common? x squared and 9x, that will be x. And then we have in parentheses x plus 9. One more time, spend 30 seconds and do the distributive property. See if you get the original problem. Equal 0. Now, because we have this product equals to 0, we can say this factor, x, can be equals to zero, and we don't have to do anything. This is a solution because it says x equal. But also, we can have this factor equals to zero, where we're going to have to solve so, uh, solve for x. So we're going to subtract nine, and we have x equals negative nine. 
These are the two solutions of this quadratic equation. And I said here, check your solution. Get in that habit when you check your solution. Uh, special and quadratic equation also. So if you plug 0 in, uh, you get 0 squared plus 9 times 0. Is that equals to 0? And the answer is yes. So we know I'm not going to spend time on that, but you see it. Negative 9 squared plus 9 times negative 9. Is that equals 0? Okay. Uh, that will be 81, right? Negative 9 times negative 9, it's 81 minus 81, and that is equals to 0. So these are good solution. Uh, we checked them. The last problem in today's lesson is this one. And you notice we have not equals to 0. So the first thing you're going to do when it's not equals to 0 is to make it equal to 0. The simplest way here is by subtracting 8x. And then you're going to have a 0 there, right? But whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. So the original equation becomes 2x squared minus 8x equals 0. So these two equations are equivalent. But now this equation is this very similar roof A, right? We're going to factor out the GCF, which is 2x. Side of the parentheses, we're going to have what? x minus 4. Again, spend some time if you are not sure about this step. Uh, Use the distributive property to see if you get the original problem. We do. And then we're going to use the zero product property. Take the first factor, 2x, make it equal to zero, and you get x equals zero. Take this factor, x minus 4, make it equals to zero, and you get x equals 4. Check the solution. Uh, you notice if I take this 0 and then plug it in, I have 2 times 0 squared. Is that equal a times 0? And the answer is yes, we have 0 equals 0. What about 4? 2 times 4 squared. Is that equal? Oof, 8 times 4. And you notice it is, we have 2 times 16 here, 8 times 4 here, we can leave it like that in this moment. We multiply and we have 32 equals 32, which is a true statement. So, yeah, both solutions are okay. We check them. So, that's it. If you enjoy this lesson, don't forget to click the like button and come back on C-square for more uh, lesson. Thank you.